Best Fit is also going to go to Daywan, who increased his lead from round one when Rodney decided to fit himself with the same gear you would wear on a 10 mile hike. Hello, and thank you for joining another episode of Dumb Data. In this breakdown, we'll take a look at the first sequel of the trilogy of battle video parts between professional skateboarders Rodney Mullen and Daywan Song. Two years after the first round video from World Industries came out, 1999 was a special year in that the new millennium was around the corner, and special effects envelope pushing sci-fi action thriller The Matrix was one of the hottest movies in Hollywood. Instead of World Industries being the first name you see in round two, Dwindle Distribution is introduced before the title card with Rodney Mullen and Daywan Song front and center. Running almost 15 minutes longer than round one, it's obvious we're dealing with more footage. But will this battle be as close as the first round? Let's dive into some numbers and find out. Swapping places from round one, Rodney has the opening part in round two. Whether Rodney immediately knew after watching The Matrix that Rob Dugan's Club to Death would be the song he skates to in round two, or the song was recommended to him, I'm not sure. Either way, Rodney's part opens to the piano melody of the latter half of Clubbed to Death where he's skating flat ground and freestyle in an alleyway mixed with a collage of his magazine covers from the past decade. The first trick is a throwdown manual ollie over what I can only guess is a piece of cardboard box to manual off screen. And yes, Rodney's only skating with one truck. The second trick is a finger tray flip nose manual nollie 360 shove, followed by a fakey finger heel flip truck stand to fakey. Treating someone on their smoke break to a bonus visual delight, Rodney goes freestyle with a varial heel flip primo, nollie primo half flip to primo, primo varial triple flip body varial. Next up is a half cab nose hook impossible that we saw from his round one part, but Rodney's been putting in the work over the last two years and implemented a late flip to this bad boy. Probably one of the most impressive purely flat ground tricks I've seen ever, Rodney does a nollie kickflip front foot underflip. Johnny Geiger landed this trick in one of his YouTube battle videos, but there's a difference between Johnny's and Rodney's, which is the foot used to perform the underflip. It's not up to me to dictate whether the back foot is harder than the front foot for the underflip, so I'll leave it up to y'all to make that call. What's this, a late forward flip? The more of this footage you see, the more you want this man to compete in Battle at the Barracks. Unable to keep his hands off his board, Rodney does what I think is a 360 big finger heel flip revert? Before he delicately steps off his board after what could only have been an intense flat ground freestyle session. What would normally be the end of the song is edited in such a way that this late 90s electronic banger keeps going. So Rodney and Socrates Leal must have made the creative decision to splice the outro of Clubbed to Death before the iconic drop in the first half, which coincides with Rodney's departure from the somber blue world of freestyle's past and blast into the present with real street skating for his first line. Starting with a familiar Nolly Backside 360 over a bench before pushing thrice and kind of carving a little before bashing into a crooked grind, Nolly Varial Heel Flip slash Nolly Pressure Flip Out. Rodney's part in round two focuses a lot on doing Nolly Flip variations out of manuals and grinds, and in some cases it's borderline impossible to pin down exactly what trick he's doing or intending to do because the board flips in a way that doesn't line up with how his feet move. This means that I'm definitely going to get some trick names wrong, but we'll get through it. After line one, Rodney introduces something that we didn't see in round one, which is a nose manual, Nolly Impossible. Next up, we're seeing the familiar kickflip underflip off a kicker, followed by a twist on Rodney's aforementioned nose manual, Nolly Impossible. In this case, a quick frontside nose grind, Nolly Impossible. If I interpreted this clip correctly, Rodney does a half cab crook nolly inward heel flip and then does a nose manual nolly inward heel flip off a bench. It wouldn't be a Rodney Mullins street part without a dark slide, would it? A refreshing take on the classic finds Rodney nolly varial heel flipping into this ledge based dark slide before popping it off to fakie. Also a new approach to the dark slide from round one, Rodney can do this trick front side before he pops over to fakie. Hitting the tables, Rodney flexes on us with the fundamentals by kick flipping into a nose manual before nollie tray flipping out. 
revealing that the table obsession grew to new heights over the past two years. Rodney ollies up a table, then another one into a nose manual before nollie kickflipping from a nearly neck high drop to flat. Like Dark Slides, a key ingredient for the tried and true Rodney Mullen skate part recipe is anything that includes a Casper, and it's a cherry on top if you throw in a little transition. One of the most innovative clips so far in this part is where Rodney knocks over a trash can and nose manual nolly flips off of it. Jamie Thomas is credited for lighting the spark of inspiration for Rodney to jump on horizontal trash cans. But I was thinking God, how gnarly that would be because if you get off a little bit it throws you off, you know? And so I was like, wow, you know? And so I started looking at trash cans. Heading to another line, Rodney's four stair tray bomb gets followed by a tasty dark slide to fakie. A half cab dark slide to fakie precludes a dark slide pop over to regular, both of which Rodney executes with his heels instead of his toes. This nollie inward heel flip out of the kickflip nose manual could be the single most vertical flip ever captured on film. A varial heel flip gap at what might be USC takes place before the start of line number four, where Rodney heel flips over the bench on flat, pushes twice, and gives us a little carvy carve before front crooking the length of two tables. Rodney's nose manual drop to nose manual on the table concoction goes down before another trash can clip, which features a nose manual nolly three shove. Is this an under varial heel flip? Seeing the kickflip underflip clip duplicated in slow-mo later in Rodney's part was a disappointment. Thanks to the power of the internet, we're able to pinpoint exactly what this trick is. There was a comment saying that this was a nerd flip, and after researching a little bit about that trick, it looks like this is closest to what's happening. It's hard to tell because Rodney's wearing these atrocious hiking boots, Bruh. but his back foot is curling the board from underneath to make it flip, while working in conjunction with the nolly shove. Breaking it down to its most basic parts, Rodney's doing a nolly backside shove back foot underflip out of the front crook, or dare I say a nolly hard underflip? As if one underflip variation out of a frontside crook wasn't enough, next up is a frontside crook nolly backside underflip. Rodney must have been proud of himself for unlocking the Nolly Impossible out of a nose manual because he does another one in this part, but keeps us on our toes by introducing a shopping cart as the obstacle of choice. Thanks to some subpar filming, it's difficult to tell whether Rodney's doing a Nolly Impossible or Nolly 3 shove in the gap from nose manual into a manual on the tables. Up next is a line that only the godfather of flat ground could pull off which starts out simple enough with a kickflip over a shopping cart, then a kickflip backside nose grind before, why not, a mother f rolling handstand finger flip. Interestingly, we're back in the blue world of Rodney's skating with the sad piano melody accompanying a crooked grind nollie heel flip on a table. This nollie varial heel flip out of the crooked grind is more of a pressure flip out than the former, considering his back foot virtually goes straight up and does nothing towards contributing to a heel flip of any kind. If you couldn't tell by now, Rodney and Crooked Grinds were inseparable in 1999, proved by the ninth clip of a Crooked Grind in his part, this time made up of a half cab crook nollie heel flip, then a Crooked Grind nollie frontside heel flip, then a duplicated half cab crook nollie inward heel flip. Replication is rampant in Rodney's round two part, with a second frontside nose grind nolly impossible, before it's back to the crooked grind flipperoos. Rodney mentions in an interview that this is the hardest table trick he did in his part, and claims it's a half cab crook nolly heel flip shove it, quote unquote, around you. The half cab crooked grind, um, flipper, half cab crooked grind nolly heel flip shove it around you, that was by far the hardest one which I can only guess means a nollie pressure flip. Fun fact about this clip is he kicked the nose hard enough out of the trick that it chipped his board. The ender is Rodney's third nollie inward heel flip out of a crooked grind, which is a little confusing, especially when the two previous half cab crooked grind nollie inwards are arguably more difficult than a crooked grind nollie inward heel flip. Before you know it, Rodney cruises away into the sad blue horizon before a Jesus cross closes us out, to which, um, I have no comment other than it makes me immediately think of that King of the Hill episode. Ugh. Praise him! Yeah. That was awesome! Thanks, but not as awesome as Jesus. 
Rodney did 49 tricks in his round two part. Well, 48 if you don't count that duplicate kickflip under flip clip, and clearly stepped up his game from round one by showcasing his mastery of crooked grind flip out variations, new obstacles, and even further pushing the dark slide threshold, as well as achieving the unthinkable and expanding further in his flat ground abilities. But we haven't even checked in on Daywon's song yet. Unlike round one, Daywon's full part is bookended with Rodney's and takes place after all the other Dwindle Skater's parts, but there's sprinklings of clips of both Daywon and Rodney in between. For example, the Speed Demon section features two tricks from Daywon off a kicker and over a gap, where he does a tray flip and backside flip. And Rodney actually has a clip too with a varial heel flip down some stairs. Before getting to what would be considered his official round two part, Daywon has a prologue-esque 15 trick deca section. We've got backside 180s, kick flips, a preview of what Daywon's been cooking up on roofs, big flips and frontside half cab heel flips over gaps, elaborate table setups that also show us how the homie's been honing his skills with blunt slides, as well as leveling up his manual stats. Damn, Daywon, did you leave any footage for your actual round two part? There's a training part that is also wedged in before the round two part where Daywon stacked footy from warehouse sessions. The first clip is a nice line featuring a tray flip over the A-frame or volcano, whatever you want to call it, and then casually does a blunt stall kick flip to fakie on a six foot quarter pipe. The front side 180 switch crook is a callback to round one and kicks off a four trick sequence of bump to bench tricks, including a tray flip nose blunt, kick flip nose blunt, and a switch front side nose blunt to regular. Floating a kickflip across the gap, Daywon eloquently locks into a nose manual on the sawhorse bench. Daywon's got them all down, including backside nose blunts, the hardest of all the basic slide tricks out there. A boosted kickflip across the whole A-frame preps us for a transition to the flat bar where we get another homage to round one with the backside 180 fakie 5 to fakie and a fakie flip backside 5 to fakie. Making sure not to neglect the manual tricks, Daywon makes them all look easy, starting with a fakie flip fakie manny 180 in front of Rodney, fakie manny fakie tray flip, another round one special with a backside flip fakie manny, and a new one with the nollie backside heel flip fakie manny 180. Time for some ledges. Daywon can apply what he does on flat bars to other obstacles, proven by this fakie flip backside 5 to fakie. Symmetry is always appreciated, and Daywon delivers with a switch frontside nose grind nollie flip, followed by a switch backside nose grind nollie flip. Enough ledges, let's do four more manual tricks. Starting with a fakie flip, fakie manny, fakie flip, fakie flip, fakie manny, fakie tray, and an elevated kick flip manual and tray flip manual. The final three tricks of the training section are bump to box tricks on the A-frame, starting with a gap to nose blunt, then another gap to nose blunt on what looks like the same day just from a different angle, before finishing with a gap to crooked grind. Okay, so Daywon's at 42 tricks total, and we haven't even started his round two part. And if you remember, Rodney did 49 tricks overall. So as long as Daywon does at least 8 tricks in this final part, he's going to be the winner in terms of footage volume. After about 5 minutes of digging, the song Daywon skates to seems to be credited to more than one artist. The credits in round 2 attribute Tech 9 as the sole artist, but if you search Styles of Beyond on YouTube, you'll find comments mentioning that Sway and King Tech are the two artists who appear on the track. Skating to the record scratch heavy and fast paced rap flow in Styles of Beyond was an appropriate choice considering Daywon's high energy technical style. The first trick in Daywon's round two part is a kickflip gap to long manual, followed by a nice tray flip gap. Taking his round one tricks to the next level, Daywon's switch backside nose grind fakie flip requires a gap out, and instead of simply doing a backside 180 into the fakie 5 Daywon can now backside flip into them on crusty ledges. At this point, fakie flip fakie mannies have to be a warm up for Daywon, who stays locked in and at a drop down to another mani pad. 
Next up is a fakie flip backside 5-0 to regular before we find out Mr. Song can nose blunt down two precariously stacked tables down a 13 stair, which he can do to both regular and fakie in the same session. Gaps are bigger now in round two, where Daywon kick flips and backside flips before returning to the down table setups, which we're looking at a backside nose blunt and a frontside nose blunt drop down to nose blunt to fakie. For some reason, this inward heel flip blunt slide is hidden in the middle of Daywon's part, when in reality this extremely difficult trick deserves more recognition. But before we can absorb what's going on, it's on to the next trick with a frontside tail slide drop down to fakie Manny. Inward heel flips must have been hot at the turn of the century, and Daywon shows his support of the trick by flinging one on an 89 degree bank. Can't get enough of the ninja style tray flips, and let's throw in a nollie backside heel flip huck for good measure. Stacking no less than seven tables allowed Daywon to ollie up one, then use another as a kicker to do a frontside 180 fakie manual onto a double stack before dropping down to a relatively narrow bench that he also fakie manuals. A kickflip nose manual on the down and across table setup gets us ready for the roofs, where Daywon flexes his consistency and massive balls by getting a lot of footage on top of school buildings, starting with a kickflip gap to nose manual, a kickflip gap over the table, a lengthy tray flip gap, inward heel flip, nollie backside heel flip on a rainy day, and a nollie backside heel flip on a not so rainy day. As if our palms weren't sweaty enough, Daywon decides that a nose blunt on a bench on the ground isn't enough anymore and sets up the bench across the six to eight foot roof gap to do the trick. Can you imagine if one of those siren speakers randomly started wailing on his run up or in the middle of his takeoff? Another roof gap trick features a nolly heel flip, then a gap to crook on the bench, gap to frontside nose blunt to fakie, frontside 180 gap to nose grind, and then finally a kickflip gap to backside 5-0 before we can get off the damn buildings. The first of the final 10 tricks is on a double stacked out table setup, where Daywon does either two switch backside nose grinds or a switch backside crook, and then a switch backside nose grind or two switch backside crooks. Swagged out in the gold chain and green windbreaker jacket, Daywon does a switch nose blunt on the down table setup, then a hectic combo featuring a switch backside nose grind drop down to fakie manual. Daywon's soft spot for frontside 180 switch crooks is evident from this clip being the first of the last five tricks. And the final three tricks are made up of a kickflip nose blunt, tray flip nose blunt, and lastly the long kickflip nose blunt on the 13 stair down table setup. Daywon did 43 tricks in what would be considered his official round two part, stacking his overall total number of tricks to 85, which beats Rodney's 48 by 37 more tricks completed. Similar to round one, there's more than just the sheer number of tricks completed that need to be taken into consideration when comparing Rodney Mullen versus Daywon Song. Style is going to go to Daywon, which isn't much of a surprise. Best fit is also going to go to Daywon, who increased his lead from round one when Rodney decided to fit himself with the same gear you would wear on a 10 mile hike. Innovation is much closer in round two than round one because Daywon really stepped up his game with the roof gaps and table Tetris creations. Rodney Mullen skated trash cans, shopping carts, went bonkers on the crooked grinds, and further push the limits of what can be done on flat ground. Given the latter factor, Rodney's going to be the winner of innovation on round two. The last category to consider is a new one, which is the most improvement displayed compared to round one. And without a doubt, this award is going to Daywon. Daywon skated bigger and taller obstacles, longer and scarier gaps, and got more technical in round two compared to his 1997 part. This means Daywon is the outright winner in round two with more tricks, better style, better fits, and more improvement than Rodney, who is the winner solely on innovation. Similar to round one, before even logging tricks and breaking it all down, my gut told me that there was a clear winner between Daywon Song and Rodney Mullen in this extremely serious face-off, and it was for sure Daywon coming out on top in round two by a much bigger margin than the battle in round one. As it stands, Rodney's the round one champ, and Daywon gets the W in round two, so who breaks the tie and wins the war in round three? Thanks again for tuning in. 
Be sure to check out some of the other number crunching vids on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe, click the notification bell to stay on top of new episodes, and drop a like if you enjoyed this breakdown. See you on the next dumb episode.